What's going on guys, Vlad with eeenthusiast.com here and in today's video I wanted to answer a non-technical question that I've been getting a lot on my Facebook and email channels. So the question is, how do I get started in the electronics field? How do I learn what's required in order to build my first project or perhaps become uh, a more advanced programmer slash electronics designer and what do I need to learn or which platforms do I need to learn in order to kind of get to that level and the reason why I wanted to answer that question is because I know that a lot of my viewers are very familiar with electronics you guys know how to program you guys know how to build your own circuits but a lot of viewers are also uh, kind of starting out they're unsure of what they need to learn which area they need to focus on where to kind of like take this to the next level so I wanted to provide my own perspective kind of give you an opinion and uh, a path to take that I think that I personally believe is the best path or a good path to take in order to become proficient with electronics learn uh, how to build your own DIY projects and what you need to kind of focus on as you're starting out. So without any further delay, let's get started. All right, so the first question that you will need to ask yourself is, what is my goal with electronics? Where am I looking to take this? Am I trying to get into a career with electronics? Am I trying to become a technician, maybe a field installer, an engineer, a design engineer perhaps? Or am I just doing this as a hobby? Maybe I'm trying to automate something inside of my house. Maybe I'm looking to do a couple of projects, just kind of learn this on, on my own pace and sort of apply these skills to everyday uh, everyday life, learn how to troubleshoot my car, for example, how to replace uh, my own circuits, kind of design simple circuits, and so on. So depending on which path you want to take, uh, you will have different sort of options that open up to you, uh, or the requirements are different, uh, depending on which path you want to take. And if you want to take the more of a DIY path, my recommendation would be to sort of get into a starter kit and these starter kits can range from you know the basic Arduino the ones that I've been covering a lot on my, on my channel to something more complex like a Raspberry Pi perhaps or maybe a, even an FPGA development board so in order to kind of break yourself into electronics and I do recognize that the learning curve is fairly steep you need to start building your projects and I can't stress this out enough you cannot just sit there and watch video after video assuming that you've gotten through it and you've understood everything because a lot of the underlying problems of electronics do not occur uh, when somebody's filming a video or writing a tutorial perhaps that you will experience on your own once you kind of buy this kit you start building it on your own you start building the hello worlds which is which is which is just a simple LED with a resistor on the Arduino and getting it to blink. So you will experience a lot of, um, how to say it, you will experience a lot of challenges and problems along the way, even though the project is fairly simple. So it's also very important to kind of start uh, experimenting with your electronics so once you buy your kit and you kind of decided on a platform that you wanted to pursue start building things that people are posting online but at the same time try and build something of your own for example if you have a resistor with an LED how can you blink two LEDs how can you blink three what are the limitations of your system so for example if you have an Arduino you have a certain number of pins same as the Raspberry Pi and the BeagleBone but how many can you actually use to drive LEDs for example how do you go beyond that step so try and do your own research and kind of dive deeper than what is being presented to you don't just you know like build a circuit understand it and then say like okay well now I know how to build this and I'm all set no start building something more complex try uh, even try to experiment for like I'll give you an example I get asked a lot why do you need a current limiting resistor for the LED where do those values come from well why don't you try it out an LED is a very cheap component at this point so why don't you just plug in an LED into 5 volts into a 5 volt rail and see what happens obviously don't plug it into your Arduino pin because you might damage the pin of the Arduino as well but try to plug in an LED into a 5 volt rail on its own and see what happens 
uh, just a quick tip, you're going to be burning the LED. But that's kind of the learning experience that you will only get by exposing yourself to electronics. So as far as the kits go, uh, you can get a lot online. You can buy them on Amazon, eBay, and many other websites. Like I've mentioned, there's a couple of uh, very familiar or very documented platforms. The Arduino, the BeagleBone, and the Raspberry Pi. I highly, highly recommend you go with one of those. And the reason is fairly simple. And a lot of you might argue with me saying it's not the true electronics you're not getting the full full experience but you do get the benefit of having a platform that's very well documented that has a huge huge user base that has a lot of different tutorials different aspects to it and kind of makes learning a lot of fun so if I was you I would purchase either the Arduino or the Raspberry Pi, one of the two. And make sure that your kit, either you can buy it together or you can buy it as a separate package, make sure that your kit includes at least, at the very least, a breadboard, some LEDs, resistors, cables, and then optionally, obviously going through some of the more advanced tutorials, get an LCD screen as soon as you can, get a few relays, get some transistors, start working with different protocols for writing, for example, to an SD card, start writing uh, an I2C communication to some other peripherals, for example, an EEPROM chip, um, some temperature sensors that you want to get, an LED strip that would be also very nice to have in your kind of arsenal, and go from there. Start building your projects. I can't again. I'm trying. I'm saying this um, a third time, I believe, but start building something. Start trying projects. Maybe to you they appear very challenging but as you go through it and break it down you will learn more and more in the field and start kind of growing as an electronics expert so if you want to pursue a career in electronics i would recommend a slightly different approach to learning what you need to master uh, than what it is for a diy hobbyist and what i mean by that is essentially in conjunction to starting to build your own projects you also want to get the formal knowledge because when it comes to the real world or the real interviews you will re you really need to understand the fundamentals you need to understand how things work at the uh, very bottom level so what i'm talking about is you need to know all of your nodal theories you need to know how to conduct a mesh analysis for example Thevenin's theorem you need to know how to perform Laplace transforms if you want to become a uh, design engineer you need to know how to work with OPAM circuits you need to be able to do all of those calculations so my advice to you if you're trying to kind of build your knowledge base is try and find a book on electronics which is going to be going through those concepts one by one so how to for example how to use a transistor as an amplifier, how to use a transistor as a simple switch, because you will need to be answering those questions in your job interviews. You need to learn the theory behind the electronics at the same time as you experiment with your project. The difference is that you're not going to be only kind of knowing what to do, but you also will understand everything that comes in the back end so to speak of electronics you will understand what kind of voltage levels to expect you will understand what kind of signal levels to expect you will know how to troubleshoot very well just to kind of summarize once again i think that you will need to combine your uh, project building activities with some fundamentals in electronics and design and kind of learn the theories and go one step at a time and once again you need to break this down into um, smaller goals for yourself so for example nodal and mesh analyses this is something that's taught in the first uh, first courses or first semester in engineering school and that's something that you will need to learn and master if you want to get a career in electronics the last piece of advice i want to give you is don't be afraid to start building uh, a new project don't be afraid to build something that you've never built before don't be afraid to ask questions if you're stuck there's probably somebody out there that's stuck in the same place that solved the same problem and knows the answer don't be afraid to reach out to people uh, whether it is on YouTube, Facebook, people that you know 
uh, which, which can help you solve the problem and kind of go to the next level. Uh, reach out to the communities. There's a huge community surrounding the platforms that I've mentioned before, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone. They have forums, they have support groups. There's probably a uh, meetup group around in your area where you can go and learn from more experienced you know, programmers, engineers. You can sort of combine your efforts and kind of overcome the problems that you're facing. So never be um, afraid of asking questions, of seeking kind of the next level of advice that you need to progress, whether it is your career or your hobby. All right, so to quickly summarize, the number one question you will need to ask yourself is, where do you want to take this electronics passion? Do you want to make it into a hobby or perhaps a career in electronics or something more appealing to you? Despite your choice, the number one recommendation I can give you is start getting your hands dirty. Buy an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or a BeagleBone kit and start building some projects, whether it is very simple stuff or progress towards more advanced. If you're deciding to do this as a career, start learning the fundamentals of electronics. Review all of your circuit analyses, nodal analyses, and make sure you have all of that down in conjunction to building your project. And last but not least, don't be afraid to ask questions. You can post in this video, you can comment a question down here, you can contact me on Facebook, you can contact uh, a lot of the groups on forums. So never be kind of in the situation where you're stuck, you don't have the answer and you're sort of giving up on your project. Always, always seek help. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was a helpful video for some of you. Hopefully I've clarified some of my own perspectives of what I would do if I was starting off in electronics right now. And uh, as always, thank you for watching. Comment, subscribe, and like the video. And see you guys next time. Bye. Two pins A0 and A1, and then it's going back to the photo cells which are sitting on top of the solar panel on either side right here. Um, right